another night of fire and violence. Now the protesters are setting up a big fire in the middle of the road between the PLS Hong Kong garrison and the Hong Kong ACL government uh, central office. And now it's about 7.30. The fire has been lasting for over 10 minutes. It's just getting bigger and bigger. Now the firefighters are trying to distinguish the fire, but apparently that's not working right now. Just minutes ago, some protesters are throwing something like the explosive objects into the fire to make the fire bigger and bigger. And minutes ago, there was huge sounds of explosive and blast. Around 8 p.m., firefighters and police arrived. Now the police have arrived to restore the peace and order. You can see the riot police in Fuji have arrived trying to contain the riot here. Sorry. Now there are around 100 riot police are in position trying to tackle the riot here. And you can see right behind me is the water cannon trucks on standby trying to disperse the crowd. And the fire right now has distinguished there is a firefighting truck on the opposite. We followed the police to another location about one block away from the fire. Police are clearing the barricades. Bystanders said they saw rioters throwing Molotov cocktails. So in all these barricades, and then the police came. So what I understand is police split it all the area. However, uh, people were firing a Molotov cocktails um, at the police probably. So there was some fire over there. Rioters are like water flowing from one location to another. Now the protesters are gathering behind me at the Causeway Bay near the shopping mall of Sogo. Now you can see the protesters setting up another fire in the middle of the road. And just on the opposite there were the, the police, right the police, they have fired several rounds of tear gas. And my eyes, they are burning. And my face, now it also hurts very much. So I really don't know how long this standoff will continue. More police then arrived and dispersed the crowd. Several rioters were arrested by the police, and the escalation of violence in Hong Kong continues. China Media Group has launched a new radio station in the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area. It is the country's first national radio station tailored for a region that is home to millions of Cantonese speakers. The CMG radio for the Greater Bay broadcasts at FM 101.2 MHz for 21 hours a day. Programs including news, business and features will be broadcast in Cantonese and several other local dialects. The radio covers nine cities including Guangzhou and Shenzhen, as well as two special administrative regions, namely Hong Kong and Macau. Shen Haishung, head of the group, has high hopes for the radio. The launch of Radio of the Greater Bay and its new media platform will help make use of the area's comprehensive advantages, deepening cooperation between the mainland and the SARs. It will also support Hong Kong and Macau's efforts to integrate into national development as well as maintain long-term prosperity and boosting livelihood in the SARs. The Greater Bay Area is one of the most open regions in China, boasting great economic vitality. The initiative was first introduced in China's 13th five-year plan. It aims to turn the region into one of the world's top Bay Areas and world-class city clusters. Nicknamed China's Christmas Village, the city of Yiwu in the eastern China's Zhejiang province is considered to be the world's factory for Christmas decorations. And according to the local Christmas Products Industry Association, about 30% of what's produced here ends up in the U.S. Among the goods the U.S. has delayed tariffs on until December are Christmas products and other consumer items such as toys, phones, and laptops. This so the measures in Trump's words won't be relevant to the Christmas shopping season. But while it is hard for American importers to find alternatives to Chinese suppliers, manufacturers here have already diversified their market. For over a decade, the U.S. has proved to be Huang Jinghe's biggest client source. Although his goods haven't been levied yet, Huang has noticed a decrease in orders from America. That, however, does not impact his business. 
We started switching to lower cost products two or three years ago. Now we have more buyers from countries in Africa, South America and even India. The US accounts for only 30% of buyers. It used to be at least 60. Increased orders for Huang's products mainly come from countries participating in the Belt and Road Initiative. A trend experts say reflects the tenacity of the Chinese economy, despite escalating trade tensions with the U.S. Although trade with the U.S. is decreasing, trade with the European Union and Belt and Road countries is increasing rapidly. This is an emerging structural change. Wang Jinghe, however, still wants to expand his U.S. market, given that there are hundreds of millions of potential consumers. But that plan, he says, also depends on how things go between the two countries. In downtown Milan, Italy, a group of 22 Chinese children stand locals and tourists with a flash mob show. Their performance featured classical elements and music from Sichuan, known as the land of abundance or hometown of pandas. It's their third stop in Europe after France and Switzerland. We are all very proud. We sang songs in our mother tongue to the people of Italy. The audience was filled with applause. It felt really good. In the town hall of Vado Ligule in northern Italy, the young reporters talked with the city mayor about a joint project with the Chinese companies. The project aims to shore up the handling capacity of a local port. After its launch in December, it will become one of the most capable shipping terminals in Europe. The Belt and Road Initiative has brought in diversified sources of investment to boost local growth. Before that, investment was limited, done only by Italian companies. A similar event took place in Sheffield, Britain, where 27 reporters visited the town hall. The mayor briefed them on the city's connections with Chengdu, the capital of Sichuan province, which signed a sister city agreement with Sheffield in 2010. We are diversifying now more in, in hospitality and, uh, and business, uh, technology, uh, and I think that is similar with Chengdu and China. The third group of 14 children visited Chiang Mai in northern Thailand. There, they had a trip to a local elephant sanctuary to learn about wildlife protection. From Outside the sanctuary. Yes. A hometown melody was heard that resonates with a different culture. Now in its third year, the annual Little Panda Reporters event was launched by China's National Radio and Television Administration and Chengdu TV station in 2017. The trips are part of a national program for cultural exchange, allowing Chinese youth to learn more about the world around them. Smart tech manufactured in China. Everything from flat screen TVs to smart watches to smart speakers all face a 15% tariff. A young tech conscious generation has already seen prices on trendy products like scooters and vaping devices rise due to previous tariffs. Tiffany Zong, who runs a company that gathers market intelligence on teens, says tariffs are affecting their purchases. We grew up on smartphones, we grew up on social media, we grew up on these smarter products making our lives so much easier and so much faster. These tariffs will impact um, kind of which products we will continue buying if prices go up, um, which is huge. But here in Silicon Valley, so many companies rely on manufacturing in China in order to bring down costs to take on the competition. And that can be especially important for startups. This has made it very nerve-wracking because startups are traditionally very you know, thin in terms of their uh, you know, spending power. And so any increase, whether it's a few percentage points in their you know, yearly expenditure, is going to make a big difference. Meyer points out another important component on the tariff list, lithium-ion batteries. Tremendously worrisome 
for a lot of the newer entrants in the autonomous vehicle space. Right now, there's, there's very little infrastructure in battery manufacturing for these new self-driving car startups outside of China. The other real possibility is that consumers face uh, reduced innovation from those companies. Everybody looks forward to the next big smartphone or the next big reveal of an operating system or something like that. With disrupted supply chains and fewer resources, we're going to see less innovation and consumers as a whole suffer as a result of it. The Silicon Valley Leadership Group will continue lobbying the Trump administration hard as the next round of tariffs slated for December 15th could be more drastic, with laptops and smartphones currently on that list.